When we think about living a healthy lifestyle, we often think about diet and exercise. However, we don't really ever think about exercising our brain. Something else that we don't think about too much is we just take for granted that memory loss is just part of the aging process. Well, the folks at Learning RX have something else that they'd like to say. Through brain training techniques, the Learning RX trainers have found a way to increase brain function, improve memory, and overcome a myriad of learning challenges. So today, we're here to talk to the Learning RX trainers to find out just who can benefit and how effective it can be. So cognitive skills are the brain's toolkit. So they are those uh, skills that we have that allow us to process information, learn new things, and keep that information, such as long-term memory, short-term memory, visual and auditory processing. So these skills are imperative in the ability to learn in the first place. So where tutoring companies are going to work solely on those academic areas, their job can't be officially done if the cognitive skills aren't in place in the first place. Prior to coming to Learning Rx, I had gone through extensive tutoring trying to get the, uh, the tools that I needed, but what they were going over was basically over and over the stuff that I had been doing on my own. So when I came to Learning Rx, I, uh, they, they really helped me form the tools that I needed to pass the test. They helped reform my thought process and my memory skills. I thought I would be just simply learning a new way to tutor. I thought it was a tutoring program. When she said trainer, the first thing that came to mind was physical therapy, you know, something like in that field. And I found that it's almost exactly around those lines. You're training these kids for not only life skills, you're training them for confidence, you're training them ultimately for success. So being a Learning Rx brain trainer is really a special job. It's not much of a job at all in that we have a lot of passion for what we do here and really being able to see a child change in front of you, there's nothing more rewarding than that. Our graduation ceremonies are filled with joy. Um, sometimes there are tears, but they're all very happy tears. The biggest improvements that I hear from parents and children themselves are that their self-esteem has improved. And um, when you have self-esteem improved, then there's nothing that stops you from improving other areas of your life. So that's really the biggest thing, and to see kids get over the mountains of difficulties that they have and uh, tackle a new challenge and do it. And that joy that gets across their face is there's nothing more rewarding than that. I would, I would do my job for free. Those that come to Learning RX are anywhere from four or five years old, mostly five, and all the way through senior adults. We've uh, trained all of their ages, all of the ages, and each of them have a, has a specific need, but yet they're trained in uh, the areas of their skill weakness, but we train all across the board. There is no limit to who the Learning RX client could be. Anyone can benefit from a better brain. Um, we work with anyone from our preschool kids with our liftoff program all the way up to seniors. We work with children that are severe on spectrum such as the autism spectrum all the way to children that are on the gifted spectrum and just looking for that extra edge. There's really no limit to who Learning Rx can help. One of the, the students that we trained was Alexis. She was a 24-year-old college graduate and she was trying to take her sports therapist certification exam. Um, in order for her to be a licensed sports therapist, she needed that and she had a job waiting for her at Mill High and all of these things were on hold and because she could not pass her test. They had tried tutoring and um, worked with companies and they just kept saying she needs more tutoring and she needs more tutoring. When we tested Alexis, what we determined was it really wasn't about her knowledge. It was about her ability to retain information and about her ability to read. About getting trained, I was a little hesitant because I'm, I'm a very private type of person. I don't like to fail, that sort of, that sort of thing. And so coming here was kind of a pride issue, but once I got into the training and realized what it was doing in my confidence and in my ability to pass the test, was that's really when I started opening it up and letting it do what it needed to do. We were working with her dad in, in the very beginning. Um, they were just very discouraged because as a parent, you spend all of this money to put your child through college and suddenly with the hopes that they'll have a job <laughs> and suddenly she couldn't get a job because of this one test and I think for him it was that ability to give um, that gave him hope that there was a brightness in her future that it didn't have to end or she didn't have to go back and get another degree 
um, because she really wanted to, to be a sports therapist. And so when she passed her exam, all of us celebrated because it was huge, the number of times she had taken it and not passed it. And then in just six weeks to be able to change her ability to take a test was, it was amazing. It was, it was a very, very big relief and exciting time for everyone here because everyone knew what, what was at stake. So it was a very big relief when I was able to pass that test finally. Uh, Maggie is a young third grader that came to us. She was adopted um, out of China. And one of the things that we noticed about them is um, they were left in cribs often and weren't held or attended to as normal developing babies often are. Um, which has led to her having a number of sensory integration issues, not knowing her own space. Um, you'll see her move around and touch a lot of things just to get the, her distance from that object figured out. We were able to help her deal with her environment with sensory issues. It was very hard for her. She, she had a need to move, and um, which translated into a regular classroom was saying she needs to be on medication, for attention deficit and we really didn't feel like it was attention deficit we really felt like it was part of her sensory integration issues the ability to interact with your environment in a positive way so in training her particularly in sustained attention you'll watch her start off an activity and it seems very easy and then you get about halfway through and you see a different child all of a sudden and that's really in her ability to keep her attention focused on a task no matter how mundane it may be Oftentimes I will slow things down for her and make her do them very slowly in order to train her to pay attention for a longer period of time. Well, I like about like how they train me because I get to learn stuff after. Because like I didn't know the presidents at first, but now I know all of them. And I know how I, my memory's better, and so I can remember stuff when I don't even know I'm remembering stuff. We've been able to help her improve so that she can sit still for longer periods of time. She can stay more focused in class. She can deal with incoming um, information better, that she's able to integrate whatever is coming her way. And she, she's just a happy, we just love her to death. <laughs> she's, she's a great little girl. We will frequently have adults come in and they'll say, you know, are you just for kids? And I said, no, you know, I said our youngest client is four and our oldest client was at the time 86. <laughs> and so we really, brain training bridges the gap. It, there, there is no age at which it's not helpful. All of us, um, as a part of the life process, we have a decline in our cognitive abilities and, and the way that our brain functions. And so any time that you um, implement brain training, it slows down that decline of our brain functioning. So it, it is imperative that we do some sort. That's why, you know, when we're talking with senior citizens, we will say, you know, do Sudoku, do um, crossword puzzles, go learn something new, take a class, because it's so imperative that you keep your brain active, just like any muscle in your body. Um, it has to be exercised, and if you don't use it, you lose it. <laughs> My daughter recognized that I was having problems talking to people and talking to the children and then talking to the grandchildren, and, and I was just having trouble with my memory. And she recommended that I come to the school, and first I didn't want to. I said, there's nothing wrong with me. But then after coming here and, and talking with Becky and going through the sex sessions, then I realized there was something wrong with me. And now I feel real good about it. And when Bob first came for the first time, it was like, I don't need this. <laughs> I'm not, I don't, I don't have to do this. I don't know why she wants me here. And it was, it, it was hard because I had to change his attitude into thinking we all need this. And we do, we all need it. I need it. I can't, I can't imagine, I can't believe the difference in myself as far as processing and responding um, to other people and, and retaining information for a longer period of time. And Bob was the same way. And I think as we broke through some of those barriers, not, not that because he was a man, it had to do with the way he was, the generation that he lived in, the, the upbringing that he had, and it was hard that 
that initial humility of having to do something and to learn something new was hard for him. And we overcame those barriers, and now he says, when are you going to take me back, teach? So it's been kind of fun. It's fun. He's a joy to have. It, it was difficult at first, of course it was, but with Becky, it didn't take me long to get down to, to the nitty-gritty. Well, working with the adults is a little more challenging because some of the, the training that goes on is a definite retraining of the brain. Some of it is almost solidified, and so it's a little harder, so the approach is a little different when we train those adults. And uh, with Bob, we worked really hard on certain areas, and part of it was processing, and he was, his response time was, a, he would have to really contemplate on what he was saying. Holding conversations as you get older becomes harder. It's, it's harder to pull information from your memory or to stay focused on things. Our brain begins to wander, and that causes, especially our senior citizens, to kind of go into a depression that they can't hold a conversation well. And so then they kind of start secluding themselves. And so the ability that they can hold a conversation, retrieve information, remember what they had for lunch or what they did the day before, their long-term memory usually is intact, but that more immediate memory is very challenging for them. And it opens up a whole new world of communication to them. I believe that one of the first things that I saw happen in him was that he initiated conversations, which was huge for him because he would usually just stand back and listen gather his thoughts and then want to respond to something instead of coming in and saying, well, what do you think about this? So that was a huge change for him and I saw it as he interacted with other adults. So that was important for me to see in him. Yes, anybody up in, in my age group, if they're having trouble with memory, I would certainly recommend it to them. Well, one of the greatest things about working with a spectrum of clients is that I've had the opportunity to work with both lower functioning and really high functioning gifted kids and they have a lot of things in common on both ends of that spectrum and it's really interesting to learn from each and how to help the other because everybody struggles in at least one area even those that are labeled extremely gifted will often have social issues in relating to peers and so that that is something that needs to be trained in them as well there is nobody that can't have something about their brain functioning be improved I love my little boy so much and when you see him struggle, um, it's painful. And when you see him start to really grasp concepts, it's so joyful. It's um, because it's difficult. This is a difficult life. Autism is a difficult life. and. We constantly ask Andrew to push, push, push every day and every day and every day. And when I can come into Learning RX and let my child learn with somebody who understands him and loves him, Priscilla loves that boy. I know she does, I can tell. And then you can relax. You can take the moment and pray or think or relax. And you don't have to be so responsible every minute for his success. And that's a relief. It's such a relief. And it's a relief to know that people like Terry run programs like this because not everybody could do this the way she does it. Not everybody could understand and be empathetic to families the way she does. And we have kids who do weird things sometimes and they act weird or they can act aggressively or they can act differently than the neurotypical child, but she understands that and she is okay with that. And so we're not embarrassed and we're not scared and it's, it's immensely relieving, really. I mean, she just, she's just a really good person. Ethan, one of our clients, is um, eight years old. He's in third grade and he's gifted. Um, so typically to most teachers, he's gonna appear not to have any issues or why would he need brain training but he he really has a hard time um, with change and kind of processing things to make him happy and so there there are a number of um, issues for him and just how quickly he can process information 
Um, I think that working with Miss Becky is fun, and I like it because she she makes learning RX fun, while some tutors don't really do that. What we do does not look like reading, and it doesn't look like math. So one of the things that that does immediately is disarm them. A lot of times they've come to us and they've failed repeatedly, and so that failure has them afraid to try new things. So by having our activities be game-like and fun, we can really break that initial fear and have some fun with them. And there's a lot of joy in that training. Yes, the work is hard and we get to really frustrating points, but the nature of being one-on-one -on -one means that that trainer can provide as many opportunities for success for that child as can fit into one hour. And there's lots of opportunities for success in learning our X-Brain training. And it is fun to see them have it. The joy that gets into their face is amazing to see. I've seen kids run around this center just because they got something and very excited. Well, I enjoy at Learning RX the, the improvement that the children make, and it's almost a drastic improvement within the first couple of weeks, a behavioral change in some of them. Um, I think the re it's rewarding when the children look at you and their eyes go, wow, I did that. And their excitement, enthusiasm, the change in their attitude of before I couldn't do this and now I can. And they may not be able to verbalize that, but it comes across in, in their actions, not just with me, but when their parents come in and their parents see those responses too. Yeah. Go ahead and repeat the presidents, forward and backwards. Yeah. Forward and backwards. Washington, Adams, Jefferson, Madison, Monroe, Adams, Jackson, Van Beer, and Harrison, Tyler, Polk, Taylor, Fillmore, Pierce, Buchanan, Lincoln, Johnson, and Grant, Hayes, Garfield, Arthur, Cleveland, Harrison, Cleveland, McKinley, Roosevelt, Taft, Wilson, Harding, Coolidge, Hoover, Roosevelt, Truman, Eisenhower, Kennedy, Johnson, Nixon, Ford, Carter, Reagan, Bush, Clinton, Bush, Obama, Obama, Bush, Clinton, Bush, Reagan, Carter. Ethan began struggling in school and self-confidence was a huge issue for him because he couldn't perceive the world the way that um, was beneficial for him. He began to lack confidence and so here you have a very bright boy who has no confidence in his skills and so what we work on is, is training in that confidence, getting him to perceive his world to um, integrate what is coming in and be able to deal with changes and then their self-confidence rises and he can and he, he's, he's just a very bright precocious young man and um, a lot of fun to train. There's nothing like this out there. There is no other answer. These families have tried everything. They've gone to countless therapies. They've tried countless amounts of medication. They've tried tutoring. Oftentimes by the time you're coming to something like Learning Rx, which is really outside the box, it's because that box has just not worked for you. And so to be that and to provide that and to have her here making the sacrifices for her family that she does so that we can be here, you just can't help but be inspired by that. If life has dealt you some challenges in learning or memory and you've tried everything else, I just encourage you to come and try Learning RX where we can um, successfully change the way that your brain processes information and give you hope for a brighter future. I don't know about you, but I'm convinced. And I'm really excited about Learning RX and just who it can help. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.